Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Samson Chukwedo. Our, another tutorial today is on how to write a good problem statement in research. At the end of this lesson, I'll show you you're going to have a guide on how to write a good problem statement in research. Problem statement or statement of the problem is, an, a, very, is a very crucial aspect of research. There is no research that I will avoid bringing in problem statement or statement of problem. Take note, in research, problem statement is also called statement of the problem. As a very crucial aspect of the risk of a research, whether in your thesis, dissertation, or even journal articles, including grants, statement of problem cannot be avoided. So what's this statement of the problem? It is the aspect of your research that explains or describes succinctly the concerns or the issues or phenomenon that the researcher intends to study. It is the aspect of the research that depicts, it shows the problem, the goal of the research and how the problem is to be solved. That is what a, a statement of problem is. So the, the information here now is it means that there is a way to organize it for a statement of problem to be properly written. So the question is, what are the key elements that should be in a statement of the problem? The elements of a statement of the problem or problem statements includes that it must have the research problem, which is the current situation. It should also have the purpose of the research. It should have the expected or the ideal situation. A statement of the problem should have the method for solving the problem. It should also contain the proposed uh, solutions to the problem you claim it exists. Of, of course, it should show the consequences of the problem. The consequences of the problem is very, very important. Who does this affect? Then, Finally, it should show the efforts that has been made in the previous literature so far in solving that problem. Note that the organization of this out, uh, element in this form is in no particular order. This is not really the actual order that could be followed. Scholars have different views on how to uh, organize statement of the problem, but in this tutorial, I'm going to follow a pattern I think it is very logical as also even suggested by some other uh, researchers. Now to give us a guide on how to write a good statement of problem, I've decided to title it Formula for Writing a Good Problem Statement. Take note here that problem statement is designated with PS because I want to create just a formula. So take note of this that PS uh, represents problem statement. So in writing problem statement, the first element that should come is the ideal situation. This is where you describe the ideal outcome, what you, uh, what ought to be about what you intend to investigate. Here you can equally embed the major constructs in the study under the ideal situation. Take note that the ideal situation is uh, denoted with capital letter I because we're making a formula from this lesson. Having done uh, written the ideal situation, you follow by writing up the real situation, which is sometimes called the current situation. It is denoted with capital letter R. And this is where you outline the problem you think it exists or the problem you claim it exists, which is the unsatisfactory situation. Having done this, yeah, you're going to discuss the efforts that has been made in previous literature towards solving that problem. So acknowledge what the extant literature about the phenomenon you're discussing has done to address that problem. In that case, we have three points here. Remember, ideal, real, and effort. Two other points are also raised in this lesson. The next point is consequences of the problem. Consequences of the problem. 
Now, who does this problem affect? Individual, group, society, as the case may be. Consequences is designated here with capital letter C. Is denoted with capital letter C. And this is where the researcher explains or quantify the consequences of the problem. You know that despite the previous effort made in the literature, the problem still exists. That means consequences are still there. So these consequences are either the present consequences or uh, anticipated consequences that may come from the problem. The last uh, element you should consider is, I hear I call it approach to be uh, adopted, is denoted with capital letter A. And this is where you mention the gap the researcher intends to fill, that is the purpose or the goal of the research, which reflects the method of solving the problem. You can just state the goal of the research, which is purpose, as well as the method to use to solve this problem. Now, remembering that we have discussed three points before these two points. The first one is ideal situation, which is a very important element that must reflect in your statement of the problem. The next one is the real situation and then effort made in the literature followed by consequences and then approach in the literature. Based on this organization, I've come up with a simple formula which simply shows that PS is equal to IRECA. PS equals IRECA. That means a problem statement is equal to IRECA. You can call this uh, uh, IRECA if you feel so, but it's just a formula for us to always remember what uh, a problem statement contains in that order. Remember once again, it should be in this order from I to R E C A. That's the order of uh, recognizing how to write a good statement of the problem. For those of us who are statistically inclined or mathematically uh, inclined, I've come with the fact that a problem statement should be an absolute discussion in the sense that that problem should be discussed on its own without comparing it with other problems so that one will be focused. So problem statement is an absolute discussion of the ideal situation followed by uh, the real situation as well as then the efforts that has been made in the literature to address the current issue and then followed by the uh, consequences of that problem and then finally the approach that you want to adopt which includes the purpose or the goal of the research as well as the method that will be adopted to solve that problem so an absolute discussion of uh, a statement of problem should contain this absolute here in the sense that we uh, i feel that uh, you should not be discussing the problem in line with another problem because it is that specific problem that the research intends to solve so it should not be discussed with another problem that makes it an absolute discussion of the statement of the problem and i just decided to represent this mathematically for now and future uh, knowledge develop knowledge development so recall once again that a statement of the problem which is your ps is equal to i plus r plus e c and a in this order when discussed this way you can have a good statement of the problem written in your research sometimes despite the five steps 
have identified. Sometimes, uh, research reviewers, editors, or even uh, research supervisors uh, expect students to present or expect authors to present a statement of problem in a very concise form. So I've decided to come down more with uh, a more compressed form that will give us uh, a concise way of writing statement of the problem. Here, as a result of my formative experience in academics, I've come up with the fact that the first paragraph should uh, discuss the ideal situation. The first paragraph should discuss the ideal situation. So ideal situation should be your first paragraph, which constitutes the ideal outcome and the variables, uh, major variables that is being investigated. Then having discussed the ideal situation, I feel we should combine the real and expected, sorry, uh, effort made in the, in the previous literature. So the real situation and the current situation, which depicts the problem that you claim it exists and effort made, a combination of this in a paragraph should constitute the second paragraph of writing a statement of the problem. Then the last one here is a combination of your C and A, which is consequences and approach. That should constitute the third paragraph. A combination of these two is very important. A combination of these two is very important. If you must follow these three steps of writing statement of the problem. I know that some researchers or scholars have suggested that a statement of problem could start with R, but I feel that logically, even as some other researchers have also suggested, it should start with ideal situation because uh, it is better to tell your readers exactly what is expected to be of a situation before you come up with the problem, which is the present situation. And then I feel that combining the R and E is the fact that by the time you bring the uh, problem, you should be able to tell whether this problem is, has been addressed directly or indirectly in the previous literature. And I haven't done that before we come with the consequences because if the problem exists and effort has been made, yet the problem is still there in one way or the other, then the consequences of the problem, whether present or anticipated consequences, should now follow, which having written you now propose the uh, what you intend to do the gap you want to fill in literature now so seeing this is still an absolute way of representing no need to present mathematical approach here but it's an absolute combination of ideal situation which constitute first paragraph a real situation and effort made in literature should constitute second paragraph and then the consequences and approach to be adopted should constitute the third paragraph. To make this lesson more practical in nature, although I'm not going to write the statement of problem here, but I just want to bring some insights to make this lesson more practical in nature. So have a problem. For instance, we have a research problem or topic which is career indecision and employment anxiety among students. You craft a title from that problem. For instance, effect of career maturity on students' employability skills. To write a statement of problem here, the title and the problem that you have stated here are very important. So your, the first step is to discuss the ideal situation. Remember that if a student has to graduate, he's, he, he's been developed in a career where it's supposed to be uh, confidence of so that he can be fully employed upon graduation. So students uh, gain full employment upon graduation is the ideal outcome that should be discussed here. And then in discussing that, the discussion should be improved with the major constructs of the study, which is career maturity and employability skills. Having written this, the next one will be a combination of the real situation and effort made in the previous literature. Remember, the real situation is the problem. Ability to bring out the problem will help you to outline the problem, which is career indecision and fear of being unemployed upon graduation. 
and then followed right up with what literature has done. An effort I made there is to show that literature has uh, addressed uh, students' employability via different learning models, but have neglected career uh, maturity in addressing employability skills. That becomes a very significant gap to fill, and that shows that there's still a problem to address. Having been able to do that, the last step is to combine the consequences and the approach. If a student graduates from uh, school and or about to graduate and discover that he's still having doubts about his or her career and then having that fear to be employed, the tendency for the students to lose confidence in their profession is there. That becomes the effect on an individual student. Now, if each individual student lose confidence in their profession, we may be having lack of professionals in different walks of life, and that is a societal consequence. So this can be stated as the consequences that are, are possible from this problem to be addressed. However, our advice, be careful of the consequences you state in order not for the reviewers or readers to force you to go measuring the consequences in your study. Then to show the approach, just state what the study intends to do. That is, investigate the longitudinal effect of career maturity in building students' employability skills. Take note here that longitudinal effects try to reflect the method to be adopted. A follow of this step will help you to, if you follow this step, it will help you to write a good statement of the problem. I will not end this lesson without a puzzle. To conclude this lesson, pick up a problem from your area of expertise, your area of study, raise the problem and craft a title from it. Having crafted a title, discuss the ideal situation and then followed by discussing the effort and uh, the reality and effort made in previous literature. Then discuss the consequences purpose and method. If you're able to do this, I can. you can present it while commenting on this lesson. Comment on this lesson, present it, and let's see what comes out of it. Uh, if you like this uh, lesson, which is my tutorial, subscribe. I encourage you to subscribe to my channel now. I encourage you to subscribe so that subsequent videos we come your way. Haven't subscribed. I also want you to continue watching this video. It will help you to become uh, a scholar in writing a good statement of the problem. So I want to bring this lesson to an end, but take note that subsequent uh, videos is coming your way on research and statistics. Thank you for listening and watching my video. Bye-bye.